The movie starts with scenes of people attacking each other, causing harm and setting houses on fire. Numerous shootouts and gang fights unfold, leading to a large number of casualties. In 2014, the U.S. saw the collapse of both the Republican and Democratic parties. An economic crisis led to the emergence of a third political party, known as the New Founding Fathers of America, NFFA. The party's leader, U.S. President Bracken and his associates created a radical law named The Purge. This law allows all crimes to be legal for 12 hours once a year, during which no emergency services are available. In 2022, due to The Purge, people can unleash their inhibitions in any manner, even resorting to murder. This annual event has made the United States nearly crime-free, with unemployment rates plummeting to 1%. On Purge Day, James Sandin returns home to a secure, gated community. His neighbors express support for the purge system by placing blue flowers in their front yards. James also displays a blue flower, indicating his support for the purge. Planning to stay locked in with his wife Mary and kids Zoe and Charlie, James disapproves of Zoe's relationship with Henry. Despite this, Henry sneaks out of the house while Zoe is in her room. Henry and Zoe witness a neighbor sharpening a weapon as Henry sneaks out. Meanwhile, Mary, while placing flowers in their yard, encounters their obnoxious neighbor, Grace Farron, who offers cookies. The two briefly discuss the impending lockdown before parting ways. Charlie, James's son, plays with his eerie robotic toy, Timmy. The family enjoys dinner and then gathers in the study room to prepare for the purge. James initiates the security cameras placed around the house. Next, James activates the security system, sealing the house with metal doors and windows. For added protection, he retrieves a gun from the safe. The family then gathers to watch the official start of the purge on TV. The purge is declared underway, allowing weapons of class 4 or lower. Higher grade weapons are restricted. Government officials ranked 10 or above remain immune to the purge, making attacks on them illegal. Following a siren, all crimes including murder become legal for 12 consecutive hours. Police, fire and emergency medical services are unavailable during the purge. The broadcast concludes and the siren signals the start of the purge, James reassures his kids of their safety due to their protection measures. So he returns to her room. Charlie, unlike his father James, disapproves of the purge concept. James explains that it lets people vent their frustrations. Charlie, still unsure, retreats to his room. Meanwhile, Zoe discovers Henry, who had sneaked in before the security system was activated. Henry expresses his intention to discuss their relationship with Zoe's father during the purge, when James can't remove him. The household relaxes, and Charlie, playing with his robot Timmy, uses its camera to observe the surroundings throughout the house. Charlie directs Timmy to the study room, monitoring surveillance footage. He observes a man being pursued, who eventually stands in front of their house. Intrigued, Charlie rushes to watch the footage up close and witnesses the man pleading for help outside their home. To assist the pleading man, Charlie disables the metal door. Simultaneously, Henry heads to James's room for a conversation. Realizing Charlie's action, James rushes to the study room, reinstating the metal doors. Despite James's efforts, the man manages to enter. In the room, James, Mary, Charlie, and the stranger are present when Henry unexpectedly shoots James from the stairs, driven by a desire to be with Zoe. A shootout ensues, resulting in Henry getting injured. Witnessing this, Zoe intervenes, taking Henry away. When James looks around, he realizes the mysterious man is also gone. To protect his family, James secures them in a safe room and searches for Zoe. He discovers Henry's lifeless body in the room. Unbeknownst to James, the mysterious stranger is behind him as he checks Henry's pulse. Charlie, monitoring through cameras, alerts his parents to a group approaching their home. A masked group armed and led by someone who knows James by name appears on camera. The leader informs the family that one of their targets sought refuge in their house, as revealed by a neighbor. The group demands the target be handed over for execution. Facing a threat from the group, the family is warned that if the target isn't surrendered, they will break in and kill everyone. The group cuts off the power supply, plunging the house into darkness. James urges the family to find the man and force him outside, but Charlie is hesitant. James and Mary venture out to search for the man. Charlie, using Timmy's assistance, discovers the man hiding behind the living room sofa. Guiding him with Timmy's light, Charlie leads the man to his room where he has created a hiding spot in the closet. Timmy's light signals the man to the hiding place. Grateful to Timmy, the man enters the hiding spot. The purger's leader summons James to the front door, 
where they converse through an opening. James clarifies they aren't protecting the stranger. The leader, to intimidate James, shoots one of his own men, insisting that the group's door-breaking equipment is on its way. Concerned for his family's safety, James searches for the stranger and finds him in Charlie's room, holding Zoe at gunpoint. As the man threatens James, Mary sneaks up behind him. A struggle ensues, and James unintentionally shoots the man. Together, James and Mary secure the man to a chair, but he begins to resist. To make him yield, James instructs Mary to aggravate the man's wound. In shock, Charlie witnesses the events unfold. The family contemplates handing the stranger over to the gang, but recognizes it's not morally better. The stranger proposes going outside to spare the family. James acknowledges their mistake, deciding to fight back. As the perjurer's equipment arrives, breaking in, James gives Charlie a gun and instructs him to hide in the basement. In a rush, James forgets to untie the stranger but prepares to fight. So he hides in her room, and the stranger attempts to free himself. The perjurers start breaking in, with one opening the main door for the leader who enters with a gun. While hiding, a perjurer enters through the basement door attacking Charlie. Just as the assailant is about to harm him, James shoots the man from behind. The group rampages through the house. James confronts and defeats most of them, but the leader fatally stabs him. As James lies dying, the leader thanks him and kisses his forehead. The rest of the group begins destroying everything. In the study room, Charlie observes two people approaching the perjurers in the front yard, killing them. Charlie realizes their neighbors, Grace and her husband, are the ones helping. Meanwhile, Mary is captured by two perjurers, with the girl perjured toying with her. As the girl is about to strike Mary, Mr. and Mrs. Halverson, their neighbors, shoot the attackers dead. Mary rushes to aid James, but the leader enters the room. The leader readies his gun and expresses gratitude for their sacrifice. Before he can harm them, Zoe appears and shoots him dead. As James succumbs to his injuries, the neighbors arrive. Mary expresses gratitude, but it becomes clear the neighbors harbor jealousy and plan to kill the Sundance. Motivated by envy, they drag James's body away and take the rest of the family hostage. Mary pleads for her kids' safety, but the neighbors bind all three with duct tape. Expressing gratitude to the new founding fathers, the jealous neighbors seize the chance presented by the Purge to act on their envy towards the seemingly perfect Sandin family. Just as harm is imminent, the earlier stranger intervenes, shooting Mr. Halverson and holding Grace at gunpoint. The neighbors stand in line. Grace urges Mary to end it by killing them, but Mary refuses further violence. Instead, she instructs everyone to wait until 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. A few minutes later, everyone sits in silence at the dining table. The stranger keeps the neighbors in check with his gun. Charlie and Zoe cry, holding their father's hand. Grace attempts to take the rifle from Mary, who retaliates by breaking her nose and yelling at her. The sirens signal the end of the purge. Mary instructs everyone to leave her house, and the stranger departs after Mary expresses gratitude for his help. The movie concludes with the three surviving family members surveying numerous dead bodies outside their house. A narrator describes it as the most successful purge. News reports highlight widespread carnage in Los Angeles and a record high stock market. A man expresses his sorrow, no longer proud to be American as both his sons perished in the purge.